Okay, this is chapter eight, the final chapter in the book. And for this, we have one example, which covers a little bit of everything uh, in different ways. And so there's one scene, which is the TD sample, which is tower defense sample. This is the scene right here. And the way it works is there isn't uh, game logic, but essentially there is uh, there are actions you can take, and there's a little bit of AI going on. So for starters, uh, let's run it. And so we have this little tank guy that on his own is going to run through the environment. He's going to use a uh, nav mesh, essentially, to find his way across. And then as you get close to these turrets, they're going to lock onto you and try to shoot you. So the player has a few options. Uh, they can press the B button to boost. And you see how these little particles come out and then he moves fast. And then they have the S button to uh, open up a little bubble shield, which will presumably protect them. Again, there's no implemented game object. This is just an example. Uh, for these different features. Uh, the other thing we've done is we've provided additional uh, abilities here. So these do different things and we can look at the code in a second. Uh, so for starters we have the turrets, sorry the towers, and they have this gun uh, child on them with a tower component. And we'll open that up, I'll just take a moment. Okay, so the tower essentially is got an animator which is its state uh, controller. One is whether it's idle and the other one whether it's locked on. If it's locked on it's gonna uh, the, the locked on state rather has this uh, state machine behavior. So when you enter the state it's gonna find the player and then it's gonna set the locked on uh, equal to true on the tower component. Um, and then when you update the state, uh, then it's updating the transform look at position as the player. That's why we get it here. When you exit the state, then we just reset the, the position to its uh, regular or identity rotation and we set locked on to false on the tower component. So the reason that matters on the tower component is that we check in update. If we're locked on and you can fire, then you fire, which is a core routine. So fire will just create a project on uh, fire it towards the uh, Let's just send it forward. Um, the other thing here is that we check this uh, can fire is just based on the fire speed, so that the the turret can't just fire like you know a million particles per second. Uh, it has an interval, which is this fire speed, and you can totally tweak that for each tower if you want. So that's the tower, and then uh, the tank itself has uh, a couple things on it. it has this. Uh, again, nav mesh agent and a box collider, and there's a tank script which handles it. So, pretty straightforward. We get the agent, and then we set the target of that agent here and start as the destination. So, in our scene, you'll notice we have a uh, destination which is the goal here, and that's the position we're trying to move to. If we look at our tank, destination is set to the goal transform. All right, so we, that is going to be handled on its own. And then we have some abilities that get set uh, that we have here. So one is cam boost, or sorry, the boost. Again, there is a timer on it, so this cam boost uh, bull is checked. And then we start the coroutine. So the boost ability sets the agent speed to the boost speed, uh, and then it starts the timer. When the duration ends, then cam boost gets set to true again, and we reset the reg the speed to the regular speed. In the case of the bubble shield, we press S. And all it does, again, it sets the, the can do thing to false, in this case can shield. It turns on the shield game object, it starts a counter, and when it's over it resets those values. Uh, optionally we've provided a couple scripts that the player can, can mess around with, sort of as a template for if they want to add more abilities to this. Uh, and in fact, in the book we urge the player to, or sorry, the reader, to add more stuff to it. Um, it would be interesting to see what people come up with based on the same template. And so there's this Hulk mode ability, which just makes the, the tank much bigger, right? And we kind of, in the book, mentioned, you know, if the player wants to add something like the defense system or the buff system from the card game, uh, they, they could try that here. Shrink mode makes it move faster, and it makes it smaller. And time warp just slows down time. It sets the time scale to 0.5. Now, when you do time scale, it slows everything down. So. This is just really like uh, an example. It's not something you would actually use in your game because um, all your updates run slower, and and so um, it's not a viable way to do it in a game. 
Um, and essentially that's it. Uh, it's a very simple example, but it, it showcases you know states with the towers being locked on, not locked on, navigation, some player input, um, and it allows the player to really build from here. Um, yeah, uh, so that's it for chapter eight, and that's it for the book.